An overhead cast is ideal for performing long range casts. The cast power will start increasing once you begin casting. This line represents the furthest you can cast. You should aim to release the cast before this line, depending on how far you want to cast. When you apply too much power to your cast, the power meter will go red. This will affect your casting distance and accuracy. This will start reeling in your line. While fishing, you can increase or decrease the rate your line is reeled in by adjusting your reel speed. When you get a bite on a lure or float rig, you need to set the hook to ensure the fish cannot escape. Do this by performing a strike. The timing of the strike determines how well the hook is set in the fish's mouth. Setting the hook poorly will make it easier for the fish to escape. With the hook set, it's time to reel in the fish. When fighting a fish, you need to manage the tension on the line, too low or too high, and you're in danger of losing the fish. The drag system can be adjusted to increase or decrease the resistance on the line. If you set the drag system to its maximum, the fish won't be able to pull line from the reel at all, but this will put more tension on your line. If you set it to its lowest setting, the fish will pull line out easily and swim further away. This will put less tension on your line. Keep the pressure on, and eventually the fish will tire out, making it easier to reel in. You can also increase or release pressure as well as guide the fish by moving the rod while reeling. This icon shows that the fish is exhausted and ready for netting. You will be rewarded with experience points based on the size and the length of the species you catch. When you're ready, release the fish back in the water. If you claim a peg, you will be allowed to fish with three rods at the same time. Release the bail arm and hold the line when you are ready to start casting using total casting. But remember to keep the line held or the bait will drop. When you're ready to cast, draw the rod back over your shoulder while keeping the line held. In one quick, compact movement, bring the rod forward and release the line. You want to aim to release the line when the rod is around the 12 or the 1 o'clock position to maximize your cast's distance. You can switch between all your rods so long as you're within close proximity of your rod stand. You will want to use different casting styles based on the desired casting distance. You can switch between the casting methods any time before committing to a cast. All casts are executed using the same control methods, whether you're using simple or total cast controls. A spod is used for baiting up a swim to attract fish. Equip the spod rod from your rod list. The spod rod is cast in the usual way, but does not have a hook, so don't expect to catch any fish on it. For greater accuracy when casting, put your finger on the line or move the rod mid-flat to aim for a more precise area. The spod is loaded with bait. Every time it lands in the water, it drops its bait, attracting fish to that area. You usually want to bait the same area a couple of times, which is where line clipping is most useful. The line clip limits the amount of line that is allowed off the reel when you cast. By setting the line clip, you'll hit the same maximum distance every time you cast. To increase the chance of getting a bite, you want to aim to bait the same area around other rigs you have cast into the water. Each section of the rod stand is equipped with a bite alarm. When you get a bite on a rod that is on its rest, it will trigger the alarm. This icon indicates that a fish has taken the bait on this rod. Switch rods quickly to ensure the fish doesn't escape the hook. Once switched, be ready to fight the fish and reel them in. Remember, keep pressure on the fish until it tires out. Putting these techniques into practice is what will help you consistently catch bigger fish. If you are currently holding a rod, you can cast from any location near the water. When you cast out a float rig, a float indicator will become visible. The indicator shows the float's movements while in the water. Pay close attention as it will indicate when a fish has taken the bait. 
When the float icon begins twitching, it indicates that a fish is nibbling your bait. This is your cue to get ready to strike, but be patient. If you strike before the fish bites, you won't be able to set the hook and you will lose the fish. The float icon will twitch violently when you get a bite, indicating it's time to strike the rod and set the hook. The quality of your strike is determined by its swiftness, direction of the strike action, and the timing after the fish bites. The better the strike quality, the less chance you have of losing the fish. With the hook set, it's time to fight the fish. Observation and timing are crucial for catching fish on a float rig. So remain vigilant and you will consistently be netting fish. Your inventory is filled with all the equipment you currently own and can be accessed anywhere on the lake. A preset tackle box is comprised of three rods, and you can switch between saved tackle boxes or change an individual aspect of a rod setup. Select any equipment category which you desire to change. Each category is comprised of all compatible equipment options. Rods have dependencies with other equipment based on fishing style, so changing to certain rods will also change the dependent equipment. Each piece of equipment has its own unique stats. It's important to be aware of these stats to fish with the equipment effectively. Two of the most important things to consider when selecting a lure are the depth and retrieval statistics. All rods will be reeled in when making tackle box changes, so ensure you're not at risk of losing a bite. When you cast out, the lure indicator will become visible. The retrieval is the type of action you perform to make a lure move through the water, but it's how you move the lure that can increase your chances of getting bites. The text will show what type of retrieve you are currently performing, and the indicator will change color to represent the effectiveness of your retrieve. Red indicates the least effective, and green the most optimal. The quality of your retrieval motion will affect your chances of hooking fish. The depth indicator shows the relative position of the lure in the water. Based on the lure stats, the crankbait is more effective at attracting fish while under a constant or stop and go retrieve. A constant retrieve is performed by constantly reeling in. How fast this crankbait is reeled in will impact the depth it dives to. Depth and retrieve quality are displayed and updated in real time based on your reel speed and rod movements. If you want to retrieve at lower depths, Try increasing your reel speed. You're not going to get a bite on every retrieve, but to increase those chances, you want to keep casting out and retrieving. The longer your lure is in the water, the better chances you have of attracting a bite. This crankbait is effective at using a stop and go retrieve. To perform a stop and go retrieval, reel in at a moderate speed and then stop briefly before reeling in again, then repeat. The lure indicator will provide feedback between multiple retrieves. Some lures are effective under multiple retrieval actions, which is indicated by the lure stats. Based on the lure stats, this popper is a topwater lure and is most effective at attracting fish while under a twitch or a stop and go retrieve. Topwater lures will always skim across the top of the water, but how they vibrate on the water surface is what makes them irresistible to a fish. To perform a twitch retrieve, you want to reel your line in slowly, whilst making quick, successive twitches of your rod tip in the desired direction, followed by a pause. The splashes mimic a distressed bait fish which the bass prey on, usually on the pause between twitches. This is a more technical retrieval method that is going to take some practice. The line tension will violently spike when you get a bite, indicating it's time to strike the rod and set the hook. The quality of your strike is determined by the swiftness and direction of the strike action and timing after the fish bites. The better the strike quality, the less chance you have of losing the fish. With the hook set, it's time to fight the fish. Fishing an area with the right equipment and retrieval techniques is essential for attracting and triggering bites from predatory fish.
For larger lakes, a bass boat will be your main means of transport for navigating the lake. This is the GPS system fitted to your boat. It allows you to see where you're currently situated on the lake and identify potential fishing spots. Your boat is also fitted with an electronic fish finder. This system allows you to see the depth of the lake bed and where fish are positioned both under and around your boat. The line at the bottom shows the depth and contour of the lake bed you're traveling over, and the fish icons show a fish's location and depth. When you find a spot you want to fish, stop your boat and switch into the fishing position to start fishing. When fishing for carp, you should take your time and be observant of the water. Looking for fish tails, such as bubbles rising to the surface, or fish jumping out of the water, this will help identify areas you want to target. When there are no visible indications of carp being present, you want to target areas carp will inhabit or patrol, not all of which can be seen above the water. Weed beds and lily pads provide carp with natural supplies of food. Anywhere there is food, you can expect carp to be patrolling the area. Overhanging trees, islands, Reeds and rocks around gravel beds provide carp with shelter and security. Carp often patrol at different depths when looking for food sources. A silt bed provides a good supply of bloodworms, making it a hot spot for hungry carp. Carp have been known to use different geographic features as reference points to find their way around certain areas of the lake. The margins and banks that protrude out into the lake are a feature where carp often patrol. This is going to be different between lakes, so you should take your time looking for carp and identifying their feeding areas, making sure you're using the most effective rig for that area. Hunting for bass, you first want to locate structures. Structures are physical aspects shaped by the environment such as drop-offs, creek channels, flats, humps, and points that can normally be found in changes of depth or shape of the lake bed. Bass will orient themselves around structures and use them to navigate between points so they're good to use when selecting your fishing spots. A shoreline is a structural feature which you can expect to find bass around, especially in the presence of cover. When targeting a shoreline, you want to aim your casts parallel to it, as this keeps your lure in an area called the strike zone. The longer your lure remains in the strike zone will increase your odds of hooking a fish. You can identify structures under the water via your GPS and map. Once you've reached the structure you want to fish, you should identify and target specific cover near that structure. Cover is defined as an object that exists on or around the surface, such as trees, rocks, weeds, lily pads, docks, and bridges. Bass will gravitate towards cover for protection and to ambush prey, making cover an ideal target to position a lure. Having such a large body of water to target fish, you will need to narrow your focus for choosing where to fish. By being observant of structure and cover on and around the lake, you'll be able to identify populated fishing spots across different lakes. Danger close, danger close. Oh, no! <laughs> fucking arms all gimped out. What the fuck is going on? I got the gimp hand. What is going on with my dude here? <laughs> He's... The fuck? <laughs>